But ever since Montaigne, lack of knowledge has often served as the starting point for personal essence. <laughs> Perhaps if I can fruitfully interrogate my misconceptions, my ignorance, my flat earth notions, it will throw into sharper relief the experts' deeper insights. I first became conscious of the South when I was growing up in Brooklyn in a largely black neighborhood. Surrounded as I was by a southern black ambience transplanted to Brooklyn, all the great touring gospel choirs sang at the church on our block, and we could hear the lusty voices and the congregations clapping and shouting, I became infatuated with black culture. I fell in love with the blues, but my deepest respect was reserved for the so-called pure country blues of 78 RPM recordings. Blind Lemon Jefferson, Robert Johnson, even the urban blues musicians I listened to, such as John Lee Hooker and Muddy Waters, had to have a southern pedigree. The South seemed the cradle of all the music I loved, and I dreamed of going there. True, it was frightening, with Governor Farmer's ranting racist nonsense, and dignified author and Lucy having to walk a gauntlet through spitting crowds on her way to school. But I instinctively rejected the North's smugness that we were more tolerant, since I knew the North to be equally segregated residentially. I was at least halfway prepared to accept the Southern apologist's argument that more intimacy and warmth existed between the races down south because of the way blacks and whites were raised together. Although it did seem fishy to me that all this interracial closeness among southern children should suddenly transform itself into venom at age 15. 